Hi guys! Today I'm here with another installment of my holiday prep series to show you a little bit of how I decorate for Christmas. I'm not doing a whole in-depth video like I did with the Utah one that I posted last week because it, it kind of feels redundant and I have to save something for next year. <laughs> but I did kind of want to talk to you about how I trim my trees and um, give you a little look at that. So uh, I've actually um, already trimmed. So, okay, hold on. Let's start again. <laughs> I have two big trees in my house at this point. The one behind me that you're looking at right now is in my living room. This is the front of my house. That's a bay window right behind me. And so when you're standing in front of my house, you can see the lights from this tree. I love having a tree in the window. I love walking down the street and seeing people's trees in their windows. It's just something so magical about it and so cozy. I really just love seeing people decorate their houses too with lights and stuff. It just, I don't know, it feels so festive. Um, and then I have one in my family room, you know, where my kitchen is and all of that. And um, the one in my kitchen, I actually bought at, or my kitchen, my family room, I actually bought at Target. This is our seventh year having that tree. So seven years ago, I love it. It's a twinkle tree, so some of the lights just like flash on and off. You'll see it because I'm going to trim it on camera for you. Um, and that one I do with these woodland ornaments from the Martha Stewart collection. It was her like first launch of Macy's Christmas stuff, and I believe I bought those ornaments when we moved into this house. So I've had them for five years. So five years ago must have been her first Christmas launch at Macy's. Um, and they're just so cute. It's very woodsy, cottagey, country kind of look. It really goes with that room and I'm gonna show you, you're gonna see all that. Um, so that's a very kind of structured trimming of the tree. Uh, whereas the tree you see behind me, which is untrimmed, um, I was hoping to have time to trim it before now, but I'm a little behind here, um, is more unstructured because while I do have, um, here, let me show you. I do have some ornaments that are, oh, I don't want these all to flip over. You see these are like uh, colored glass ball ornaments. Um, so those are all kind of uniform looking, um, right? But I actually don't end up using a whole bunch of those because what mainly goes on this tree are memorable ornaments. And that includes things like Don and I exchange ornaments every year. So let's see if I can find some. Um, sorry if I just moved the camera. No, they're all in this one. Uh, oh, I should have gotten this closer to me. Oh. I'm sorry, Bunny. She's in my lap. I'm sorry. You can sit there. You can sit there. It's okay. So, um, for instance, every year I get Don the, uh, Winnie the Pooh ornament from Lennox. Um, let's see. This one's from 2010 which was last year, and so we have lots of those. And then Don will get me an ornament from, you know, wherever he chooses. Here's one he gave me um, the year we moved into our house. You can see it's 2007, and um, so cute. Uh, and what I do is on the back of them, if they're not dated already, well, even if they are dated, I write who it's for and who it's from and the year. Um, so that I can keep track, basically. And also we have Winnie ornaments. <laughs> There's a Winnie ornament. Here's her baby's first Christmas, right? In the little Winnie the Pooh frame. Um, just cute stuff like that. And so this tree is a little more colorful. It's a little less, you know, uniform looking. But I kind of like having like the freeform tree and the you know, kind of uniform tree. And then I, I, I don't know if I have time this year or not, but I really want to have a tree with colored lights. All the stuff on my first floor is clear lights. I have garlands around the banisters. I have garlands here and there. I've got the two trees and outside all clear lights, but I kind of want a basement to be sort of like the fun basement. So I want a tree with colored lights and I have so many peanuts, you know, like Snoopy in the game, gang, gang. <laughs> ornaments, I thought that would be a great, like, um, dedicated, you know, Snoopy, Charlie Brown kind of tree uh, with colored lights. So 
I might try to order one or look at Target or something. I don't really want to spend like a huge amount of money on the tree and it's not going to be a really intricate tree like this one, but um, that one I got at Target that you're going to see I think is super nice and it's, like I said, seven years old and it's holding up great. Uh, so basically I kind of stick with the same plan every year and I feel like that helps. Um, Whereas this tree is more freeform, that one's always the same woodland ornaments, and maybe the one in the basement will end up being Snoopy. Um, we'll have to see if that happens. But basically, I have this process where I start by, obviously, we bring up the trees from the basement. Um, step one. Step two, I get it situated where I want it, and I start fluffing. And to fluff, my kind of secret of fluffing the tree, and when I say fluffing, I mean you kind of have to, like, fiddle around with the branches to get them to um, kind of look better because after it's been stored it can get a little kind of scrunchy looking. I use gloves um, because e even with um, you know a fake tree these are very stiff needles and even the tree in our family room is much softer and it's still it like wrecks my hands so a few years ago I, I just decided to wear gloves and I'm glad I do. I have these sort of thin these are actually my running gloves um, and they have a bit of a collar on the bottom. I don't know what you call that part of the glove. But these work great for fluffing the tree. So that's one of my like secret, it's not really a secret, but tip, tips and tricks for tree fluffing. And so after I have it fluffed the way I want it to, I make sure all of the lights work. Now, I didn't have a problem with my family room tree this year, and I haven't really had a problem with that one. This one, on the other hand, did present some problems. And you're going to see I had... Um, some issues with lights, but I'm going to talk about that when I show you uh, kind of how I fixed it. So I fixed the light problem, resolved, and then the last step would be to trim it. Um, but I did already go ahead and trim my family room tree and I filmed that, so I thought I'd kind of show you that in sped up, sped, sped up, I don't know what the right word is, um, you know. The sped up video where I show it to you like at a faster percentage than it actually filmed at. Um, so you're going to see that, but first you're going to see this tree, like how we store it, how we brought it up and all of that. Um, and then I'll show you how I trim my other tree. I trim this tree in the same way, so um, maybe I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of this video. I'm going to show you now how we set everything up and get things looking nice and beautiful and then uh, we'll catch you at the end. So Don and I just brought the tree up from downstairs. This is the tree in our living room. It's in our front bay window here. And I got it at front gate about, well this will be our fifth year having it. And I just really like how it's designed to be on that rolly thing. It's easy to roll around. Um, it's compact. And it keeps it dust free. All that good stuff. So we're going to take the outer part down it just like tucks under the tree I'll show you when I'm done and it creates a nice mounded look at the base of the tree so this is what the tree looks like freshly taken down I haven't fluffed it I haven't strained it I haven't done anything and I haven't even tucked under the part yet but you can see we just basically we Don and I stood on either side of the tree and just pulled the um, bag down and now I'm gonna tuck it up and fluff it and you guys will see what it looks like So you can see Don helped me bring all of our bins up and we have quite a few bins of decorations. So the green and the green lidded boxes and those ones at the end are decorations I had, had last year. And then every year I end up buying a few new things, so that's what these bins are. But I'm going to make one cohesive storage unit. I don't know exactly how yet. I'm going to be redoing my um, storage room down in the basement in the new year, and you guys will see, of course, but, um, whoa, that just moved. Um, I like these bins well enough. I just can't get them anymore because they were a seasonal item one year, and they don't make them the same anymore, so maybe I'll just get a couple more big ones. I'm not sure. I just wanted to show you because I have to open the bins um, because I started fluffing the tree and noticed a couple of the strands are out, and I've located which strands they are. I'm hoping I, if I just change the fuses in the, um, the strands, um, outlets, or whatever, plug parts, <laughs> uh, the top, you can see the top is out, and, um, 
and there's one one strand right here that's out but one one can hope right if if i have to i will wrap a new strand of lights around um the tree's only five years old i think the light should last a little bit longer so i might call front gate and see what they suggest but i gotta find the baggie i have that has all the extra light uh, fuses in it so here we go just wanted to show you guys i found winnie's special holiday dog toys she's pretty excited let's dump out these other ones huh let's dump out these other ones. oh extreme close-up of winnie oh wow <gasps> our christmas toys yay what's this it's a christmas giraffe it's a christmas giraffe yeah Oh, yes. This will keep our occupied for a little bit while I'm working here. <laughs> so you guys can see I have fixed the lights. I have fluffed the tree. I don't know why it looks crooked. No, it's pretty straight. And uh, everything's good. I didn't fluff it quite all the way because, to be honest, I do a lot of fluffing when I'm actually putting the ornaments on because I kind of move the branches around to make room for the ornaments the way I want them. But... I basically fluffed it as much as I'm going to for now. And I did fix the bottom, you can see uh, how it kind of makes this, oh sorry, just almost fell over, makes this sort of mound. That's the whole cover kind of mounted over. I have to tuck the extension cords in now that I have fixed the lights and I have my um, tree skirt ready to go around. But I think it looks nice. The light fixing was a challenge, but I finally, this year have really perfected how to fix lights and it's using a couple of things. Now first of all, whenever a strand is out, the first thing I want to do is test the fuse. And so I'll take the fuses out of the, I'm not sure what to call this part of the um, plug thing. So it will be like this part of the plug. I take the fuses out of that part. This little, These little silver things, that's what they look like. And I have this special tool. It's a deluxe light set tester from nobody knows where I bought it. I believe I bought this and that at my local Ace Hardware last year, but I didn't get around to using them. This is the thing I use to test the fuses. You put the little fuse. Here, I'll show you. Oh, I'm wearing my gloves because I was fluffing my tree. Um, you put your little... Let's see if I can do it now with one hand. And you see, you stick it on there, it lights up, that means it's good. Uh, so I checked the fuse first. There were two strands that I was concerned about. They were fine. So then I went around with this tool, which is really neat. So basically, you see this silver part? You kind of hold that up to the light bulb. Uh, there. There it goes. And it beeps when it's good. So I would hold it up to every bulb on the strand that was out um, to try to determine which of the bulbs or the little fuse things, you know, the, what the bulbs plug into, was bad. And so first I would take out the bulb of the ones that didn't beep. It like doesn't beep when it's a bad one. I'd take out the bulb and you can ch test the bulb's lightness in this, I mean, if it works. But um, I'm, I don't know if I can do this one-handed but putting it in this part as well and it lights up if it's good and it doesn't if it's bad. So first I check the bulb. Then I would take this other little tool I have called the Light Keeper Pro, which I think does all the same things as that one, but I only really use it for this one part. See this little part on it? What, how do they, what do they call this? Um, let's see. They call it the Quick Fix Trigger. Um, so the shunt, the bulb shunt, is the thing, um, this little part, you know, the part where the bulb, light bulb actually plugs into. So the shunt, I'm just going to show you the picture here, it actually can go into this part of this machine. And then, I don't know if you guys can see this, but you click this button, do you see that spark? It kind of is like jump start cables for your bulb. So you do that, and sometimes you can tell that was the problem because it'll light up right away, and you put your new light bulb in, and if that fixes the problem, then the lights will come on. I had to do it for a few times on the upper strand, but I only had to do it once on that lower strand that was out. So I'm so happy now that I have these devices. Um, light Keeper Pro and the Deluxe Light Set Tester, like I said, I got them at my local Ace Hardware store last year, but if I can find them online, I will link them below. 
um, that has just made my life so much easier. That being said, it did take kind of a long time <laughs> uh, to get the fuses out of the light. Uh, you know, the plug thing itself is kind of hard and it's a little bit dangerous, but I use the edge of a exacto knife to just pry them out without damaging any of the things and of course not while it's plugged in. Um, you have to have it plugged in to actually test the light bulbs and the, sh the uh, shunts and all that, but not the fuses. So to test them, uh, I would plug the strand into an extension cord and plug that in separately just so, uh, you know, it was separate from the tree. But I'm very happy about that. I secure my star on every year. It's just, it's not secured on by anything that's attached to it. What I do is I use these clear elastics. These are like meant for your hair, but I use them for a multitude of things and I just sort of attach it using those rubber bands, those clear rubber bands and you can't even tell. Um, and I'm charging up my timer uh, in the back here where my outlets are. You can see I'm gonna charge it up so I can set the time and I leave my trees on from four o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, that's cool, look how, it got so blurry but kind of in a cool way. Um, from 4 o'clock in the afternoon until 7 a.m. I just like to have the trees on all night. And this tree you can see um, from the front of our house because it's in our front bay window. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm going to get the uh, tree skirt around now. This tree is also on wheels, so that's kind of convenient. You can kind of move it around. But I have locked the wheels because I now know where the tree goes. I know it's centered when it's right below that circle thing and the detailing on our cornice there. Um, when the star is right below that, then I know the tree is exactly in the middle of our bay window here. And this is my little garbage from all the dead light bulbs and stuff that I had to replace. But I'm glad I got it to work. I'm going to sit down and talk to you a bit about my trimming tips and stuff and um, get on with the rest of the decorations. I did get out uh, kind of, this is how I arrange my bins when I'm going through things. These are all Winnie's dog toys. I just like threw them there. Um, next year I am, when I put them away, I'm going to put them away by room next time because that's sort of my new storage system, but I just came up with that this past year, so I haven't thought of it yet for my Christmas decorations, but that's all right. And yeah, still got lots of work to do, but it's fun, fun stuff. So this is my, um, advent calendar. You can see the doors have numbers on them and you open them for each day. I'm a little late in setting it up this year. Um, it's already the fourth, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Just means I get four chocolates today. So I, what I do is I have this tiny little fake tree here, you can see. And I have, I collect every year, Hallmark comes out with these miniature ornaments for the Peanuts gang, you know, Snoopy and the gang, and I collect them. And that's what I, I put an ornament in each slot, and I'll put an, the ornament on the tree the day that I open that door. And I also put in a little candy, because really, Christmas is sweet. So, you should have some sweets. But this is how I keep, store them. I just, I saved all the original boxes, and I put them in a different bin up in the attic. But I just wanted to keep the ornaments safe, and you can see it's labeled. So I just thought I'd show you guys my little advent calendar, just for me. Well, I made quite a bit of progress. I've stacked up the bins here by the stairs that are ready to go back down. You can see the floor is clear. I'm not totally done, but I did the bulk of it, so that's good. You guys will see it when I do my holiday house tour. And I have my ornaments out and ready to trim the tree, but I might wait till tomorrow to trim it. I don't know. I'm kind of tired now. Um, but things are looking good, and yeah, it's pretty much getting wrapped up, so that makes me, that makes me feel better, too. This is our family room tree. I actually bought it at Target, I want to say seven Christmases ago. It was our first tree in our condo together. We had very little space, so I was looking for a skinny tree, but they were tall ceilings, so I wanted a tall skinny tree. And I just thought this one was perfect. Um, so I've loved it so much. I love how it twinkles. Maybe you'll see. Some of the lights kind of twinkle on and off. There you can see them going. And it's just a really nice tree. The needles are kind of like bushy. It's very pretty. 
It's different than our other tree, but you guys will see that too. So I'm going to trim it today. I have the Woodland Ornaments from the Martha Stewart Collection from Macy's five years ago. It was her, um, her first launch of Christmas decorations at Macy's, Martha Stewart's I mean. Uh, so they no longer sell these. Maybe you could find them online. I just really like the colors. They're very woodsy. It kind of goes with the woodsy feel of this room with our um, fireplace like this. And I kind of just decorate in that theme. Sort of a country-ish theme, I guess. Country holiday something. Uh, so I have... This box is from Frontgate. That's what I store my ornaments in. And they all fit perfectly in here. And I have them divided by type. And I kind of know how I trim this one. The other tree is more of a free-for-all, but this one I like to do a specific way. So I'm going to trim it. I'm going to try to film it. And you guys will maybe see me. I don't know how it'll end up. We'll have to see you in the editing what makes the final cut. But Winnie's going to help. Aren't you, Bunny? Are you going to help Mama? She's like, where's my dinner, Mom? Are you going to help me? Maybe I have to feed you and then we can film it. Well, we'll see. Here we go. me about an hour. Well, maybe you can't see that because I'm going to speed it up. But I finished my tree. I know it looks really full. I just really like very packed trees. It's sort of a personal choice, you know, how, how many ornaments you want to put on your tree. But I love this tree. I've done this. This is my fifth year doing this exact tree and I just, I really love it. The other one, like I said, is a more sort of free design. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. But um, I like how this is all ornaments from one collection on this one tree and how, you know, everything is very woodsy, kind of cottage country looking and sorry about my shaky camera work. And when he likes it too, doesn't she? Where's your face? There it is, Winnie Cameo. Winnie Cameo, you're so cute. 
Anyway, um, I'd love to see your guys' trees. So if you want to, you know, send me a picture on Twitter or post it on my Facebook wall. Um, or post a video response to this video of your tree. Love to check your Christmas tree decorations out too. And I hope you enjoyed. My woodland creatures tree. So now you've seen the setup process, all the stuff I had to go through with this tree, but I'm kind of glad I did because it really taught me um, about these products that I mentioned. This is the um, Deluxe Miniature Light Set Tester. No idea what company it's from still, but like I said, I got it at Ace Hardware last year, and the Light Keeper Pro. Um, these were instrumental to me being able to fix the lights on this tree um, and I went into more detail about how that worked but uh, I'm going to try to find these online and if I can find them they'll be in a link in the more information bar below and if I can't find them I'm sorry go to your local hardware store and ask um, I do think it was like a seasonal item last year when I was just at Ace Hardware so um, these are definitely one of my tips and tricks from now on I am just so thrilled that I found this and now I think I can fix that strand of light that was driving me strand of lights that was driving me nuts in Utah. I'm gonna take these out there with me and fix it. So that'll be nice. Uh, another one of my tips is to put the trees on a timer. Now they do have like remote control like plug-in things where you can just have like a little remote. That's how our tree is out in Utah. But um, here, I, I, I like to keep mine on a timer, uh, and I have everything come on at 4 o'clock, inside and out. So I really like these um, little timers from Westinghouse. Um, I believe I got these at Target. I saw them again this year. There's this size, and then there's one that's like a double size. This size only fits a two-pronged plug, whereas the standard one does the grounded plug with the three prongs. I mean the larger one. Um, so this just helps. I keep my trees on, like I said, from 4 o'clock p.m. until 7 a.m. in the morning. But this, these things also have a feature where you just hit um, the different program button and it just switches to on all the time or off all the time. So it's easy to change that. Uh, and lastly, I guess, my other tip for trimming your tree would be to absolutely save all of the brochures and extra parts that come with your tree if you purchase what do you think that's for you? Wayne's on my lap and she's like, what is that? It's a baggie, honey. There's nothing in it. Um, I mean, there's nothing yummy in it. There's nothing yummy in it. Uh, sorry, I'm totally distracted by my dog. That's not annoying at all. And keep them in a place where you know where they are. So I keep mine in my tree, my like extra tree stuff bin. Um, another place would be keep them that would be great would be in with the ornaments for your particular tree. I separate and store my ornaments by tree. So I don't have all my ornaments in one box. A, they wouldn't fit and B, it's just easier to have one box per tree or in some cases two boxes per tree. But keep all of that. Label your baggies so you know which trees for. They are not the same lights on every tree. Um, they are different. So I would definitely, definitely recommend that for, um, you know, to be able to fix things because when you want to keep something beautiful like this and this was not a cheap tree this was an investment um, you know it's our fifth year using it but I'm hoping to have it for a long long time you want to be able to replace the light bulbs and having these tools and the extra parts obviously very necessary now I just I didn't really get a chance to show you this because of the way the video ended up going but when I trim my tree, I like to um, start with the biggest ornaments first. And that might sound counterintuitive, but for me that just helps kind of fill any sparse spots and that way I can get into this, more like into the tree. So for instance, here you can see there's a bit of a gap right there. I don't know if you can see because of the video and the lights. I would hang some of these, you know, just kind of plain balls sorry, like on, more on towards the inner parts of the tree to sort of fill out the insides. I wouldn't put a lot, but just wherever there's a real sparse spot. And then I would go in with some of my larger ornaments. I have much larger ornaments on the other tree that you saw. 
I'm sorry, buddy. Okay, she's leaving. Uh, so, like, these. These are more decorative, and I would want to have them sort of out farther on the tree, but I put the bigger ones on first and kind of take the most sparse spots of the tree. So first I do sort of like the inner layer of the tree with sort of, you know, plainer ornaments, ones that I don't really need to see, like out on front of the tree, and then I go around um, with my larger, more decorative ornaments to the outer layer of the tree. And then I go in with my smaller ornaments because it's just so much easier to place them once you've sort of filled out your tree with the larger ornaments. That's just the way I do it. That's the way it works for me. I just feel like I just feel like the end result is better and it just takes me less time in general to do it that way. That's sort of the way of my system has evolved over the years. But uh, you're going to see this tree trimmed in my holiday house tour, which is going to come up um, you know, in a couple of weeks, I think that'll be the video that I post then. Uh, and next week I am going to be posting a stocking stuffer and um, gift wrapping video. So that's what's on the radar for the rest of this holiday series. The holiday series ends with the holiday house tour. Although, I'm not sure how much I'll do about packing up Christmas. That might be more of a video series I do next year where I show you how I um, pack up uh, things and store things. Because I have to work on my storage room and that is one of the first things on my list for 2012. Um, and you guys know that you will be involved in that process and you will see that transformation. So this is just a little bit of a decorating video that's, you know, not an overall theme decorating for Christmas video like my video last week, but more of a specific one for tree trimming. And I, I know I did show you some of my bins and stuff, but probably next year I'll go into more detail in my own house about um, decorating for Christmas. Uh, and how I actually, my like whole process and everything. But um, you will see the end result of the whole house that I, all the parts that I've decorated uh, in a couple of weeks. And I hope you all are enjoying December. We're rolling through now. It's, you know, first weekend of December is just passed and I'm just happy. That's generally the time when I like to have my decorating wrapped up. I gave myself a little extra time this year because Thanksgiving kind of took a lot out of me. But, um, you know, I think by midweek I will be pretty much all set with all the details and then I'm having a little family party next weekend, um, just some re a relaxed kind of, you know, get both sides of the family together party because we're all traveling to different places for the actual holiday itself. So that's what's on my radar. You know, it's a busy time, but it's a wonderful time. I love all the festivities. I love all of the festiveness. And, um... I hope you guys are enjoying as well whatever festivenesses you enjoy. Festivenesses, yes, that's a word. Um, also, if you didn't know, I just posted a video for my holiday contest and giveaway here on Organized Like Jen. Um, so uh, that video is up. I'll link it below if you're interested. You know, you can just post a comment if you don't want to do a whole video. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on that. You can watch that video. And I'm also running a contest concurrently, a similarly structured contest on my other channel, My Housewife Life. So feel free to check that out. I'll see you guys next week with another installment of my holiday prep series. And I hope you guys are having fun prepping for your holiday as well. Okay. Take care, you guys. See you. Bye.